name is Chanel. Welcome to my bookbinding studio. Today I'm going to show you my favorite simple bookbinding stitches. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've been taking a class called Mindful Growth Start Your Creative Journey by Mimi Chow. Recently I've been feeling easily overwhelmed by my work and all the things I have to do for my business. Mimi has provided some really good prompts and guidelines to help me return to who I am and why I'm doing this. I'm in the process of making a map right now towards where I want to be in my creative journey. And because my creative journey has had so many twists and turns, this class has been perfect for me to ground myself. I've taken classes in moments when I've been curious about something, when I want to build a new skill, or when I need to reignite my creativity. I have a unique link for you to join Skillshare in my description. The first 1,000 subscribers to use the link will get a one month free trial. Here are the tools and materials you need. I like to use curved needles and wax linen thread. Straight needles and other kinds of thread like embroidery floss work just as well. You'll also need an awl or something sharp to make holes with, a bone folder or a smooth hard edge to fold paper, scissors, a box cutter or an X-Acto knife, and a metal ruler to make straight cuts. These are some cover materials I've picked out, and I'll be using writing paper for my notebook pages. To start off, I'm folding six sheets of letter size paper together. This is 24 pound 90 GSM writing paper that I printed my own dots on. You can use however many sheets you'd like to achieve your preferred thickness. I'm using the bone folder to crease the folds. If you don't have a bone folder, use something with a smooth edge. A good alternative is the back of a spoon. Another paper option I like is sketch paper. You can find reams of sketch paper or sketch paper pads at your local art store. For the covers, I'm using cardstock. Assemble the pages and covers together and we're ready to sew. Three hole pamphlet stitch. Punch three holes into the middle fold. The measurements don't really matter as long as the two outer holes are somewhat close to the edge. Mine are one inch from the edge. For the thread, measure more than two times the length of the book. Thread your needle and start in the middle hole from the inside. Leave a tail about two inches. Go to either one of the side holes and then through the last hole and back through the middle. Tie a knot and cut off the excess. 
And that's the three hole pamphlet stitch. Now let's try it with five holes. I've made five evenly distributed holes and left one inch spaces on each end. For simplicity, I'm going to number each hole from left to right. With your needle and thread, start in hole three and leave a tail. Go to hole two. And then to hole one. Back through hole two. And skip to hole four. Go to hole five. Then to hole four. And back through the middle. I like to have the two ends on either side of the middle stitch. This is when you can tighten your stitches. Tie a knot and cut off the excess. And here's a completed notebook. It might be obvious, but the five hole pamphlet stitch is stronger than the three hole pamphlet stitch. The next method is using two signatures or sections. I'm making a guide or a jig so that I don't have to measure the holes each time. Punch five holes in two sections. Clip the two sections together so that the spines are touching. The holes punched in one section should be lined up with the other section. The thread should be about two and a half times the length of the book. Now I'm going to do the five hole pamphlet stitch normally, but through two sections.
I love this twist on the pamphlet stitch because it feels like I have two books in one. I could put writing paper in one half and drawing paper in the other half. In the past, I've also made pockets to put in the middle between the two sections. Chain stitch. For the cover, I'm using this textured woody papyrus that I found at Blick. I'm hoping to show you some different cover options that you could use. For punching the holes, I've made eight of them spaced one inch apart. I've measured thread that is about three times the length of the book. Tie a knot on one end and thread the needle. Start on the bottom most hole from the inside. Go to the second hole Then through the first, and back into the second. The double stitch creates a pseudo chain. Go through the next hole, loop the thread around the previous chain, and go back into the same hole. Repeat that step for the rest of the holes. Tie a knot to finish. And that's the chain stitch. You could even make the holes closer together so that the chains are shorter and more apparent. Do a do binding which means back to back in French. I was proud that I knew what that meant thanks to my high school French classes. For the cover, I'm going with this soft gauzy paper. There are two signatures involved in this one as well, and they'll both share a back cover. I'm starting with a longer piece of cover paper and folding the first side over the pages Flip it over and fold it again. Trim off the excess. Our friend the pamphlet stitch is back. I'm going to stitch each section into either side of the cover.
And that's dough a dough binding. Isn't it cool? I think it's really playful and unexpected. Here's how I finish off my notebooks. As you can see, when paper is folded, the edges come to a point. So I'm going to cut the edge with a metal ruler and box cutter. It's important to use a metal ruler because the box cutter can cut into other materials like wood or plastic. It took me a while to get a hang of this technique. Sometimes I need to cut off certain parts with scissors. Whenever possible, I also like to round the corners. Before I got this fancy corner rounder, I used the handheld punch which worked just as well. I'm decorating this cover with a simple collage. These are my favorite simple bookbinding stitches. What do you think? Please let me know if you try any of these after watching this video. These are some of the basics of the craft and I hope it encourages you to dive deeper. Before you go, I have one more bonus tutorial for you. Making your own memo pads at home is so easy. This is a great way to reuse and upcycle scrap papers. This is actually part of a bookbinding method called perfect binding. Perfect binding is commonly used commercially for soft cover books like magazines and catalogs. Making sure your sheets of paper line up, weigh the stack of paper down with something heavy. Brush on white glue to the edge and let it dry. Add three to four more layers of glue, making sure it dries in between each layer. That's it, that's all the steps. You can leave the pages intact and use it like a book, or you can remove each sheet like a memo pad. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll connect with you soon.